Well, good day. Um, let's pray to God. Seek his help as we come to his word. Let's pray. Lord Almighty, uh, we thank you for your word. And as we come to your word and read your word uh, in Matthew's gospel, we pray that your spirit would be at work to help us understand, uh, to help us go deeper in our knowledge and love of Jesus, uh, and to help us know what it means to live for him. Uh, Lord, and we pray this uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, continuing today, uh, Matthew chapter 8, um, we're going to read uh, two sections, if you like, uh, together, but we'll see how they connect. So uh, we're going to read Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 to 22. So let's do that. Get the words up on the screen for you. And there we go. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Well, uh, let me begin by asking you a question. So, what do you always do first thing in the morning? What you got a routine? What's that one thing, or maybe there's more than one thing, but always do. For some of us, a shower. <laughs> uh, breakfast might be the first thing you do. Exercise. Maybe you just need that coffee. What's something you always have to do? And that if you don't do that, it actually it ends up throwing your whole day out. Uh, for some I know, I'm not going to mention any names. <laughs> it might be hitting the snooze button 20 times before getting up. Uh, but whatever routine you have carved out for yourself, what is something that uh, would make you suddenly drop everything? You know, without question, you just drop everything, stop what you're doing, and have to focus on that. Um, I imagine for most, if not all of us, it's the sudden uh, tragic news that we might get by telephone or something like that, that someone we know is, is terribly hurt or worse. We'll go back 2,000 years to the land of Israel. Uh, and one central act uh, to begin each day in the life of a devout Jew was to pray what was known as the Shema. Right, it was a, a daily morning prayer, and it comes out of Deuteronomy 6. Uh, these words may be familiar to you, of course. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor. This, is, this was perhaps the most important thing a devout Jew had to do each day. Now, we do know from rabbinic teaching um, that there is one thing that uh, took precedence over the daily morning prayer, prayer, or that could take precedence. And that one thing is when a, father, when a man's father dies, uh, he, has, he had such a strong obligation to take care of the burial that this came first, even uh, took precedence over that prayer. Now, imagine a bunch of Jews walking around Capernaum, that's that uh, town by the shores of the, uh, the Sea of Galilee. And imagine a bunch of Jews walking around Capernaum, listening to Jesus. One of them comes up to him, and says to Jesus, listen, look, my dad just died and I need to go take care of the funeral. I'll catch up with you later and then I'll follow you. The expected answer would have been, oh, yes, of course. Go, go and be with your family. Take care of the funeral arrangements. Of course, go, go, go. That's not what Jesus says at all. In fact, 
what he said is perhaps one of the most culturally offensive things he says in the whole gospel. He says to the man, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. I mean, what? <laughs> Was Jesus being heartless? Where's the compassion that we're used to with Jesus? And this man's dead. This, this man's father's just died. Or perhaps he was knocking on death's door. Perhaps he was sick and, and death wasn't that far away. Whatever the case, was Jesus being stone cold? No. Jesus wasn't being heartless. In fact, what he's teaching us here is, in, is quite the opposite. Um, it was because of his heart for people that he makes this point. He was teaching the disciples what is most important and using this extreme example to do it. He was teaching them that what the, the number one priority should be in our lives, and that's following him. Because if you're not following him, then you're on a different path. And rather subtly, Jesus says that path leads to death. You notice what Jesus said to the man? Let the dead bury their own dead. How does a dead person bury someone who's dead? But Jesus wasn't just talking about physical death. In other words, those who give priority to other things over and above following Jesus are on a path to death. They're, they're dead. Um, the, the fuller expression that we find in Scripture is that they were dead in sin. Uh, Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 um, uses that kind of image of, of being dead and now alive um, in, in terms of talking about the life we once lived and now the life we live following Jesus. He says, You were dead in sin. But now by the grace of God, you have been made alive in Christ Jesus. You were dead and now you're alive. And that only happens when you put Jesus first. Jesus must come first. He's, he's not a lifestyle choice. He's not something you pencil into your diary alongside uh, doing emails and workouts. I, I mean, imagine, imagine... <laughs> If Queen Elizabeth II came knocking at your front door and asked to come in for a cup of tea and you replied with, oh, sorry, Lizzie, can't really do it right now. Uh, the block's on the TV, mum's over, just can't do it. It'd be absurd, wouldn't it? But that's with Queen Elizabeth. We're talking not about the Queen of England. We're talking about the King of Kings the Lord of Lords, and people do it all the time to him. Jesus comes knocking and they say, not right now, Jesus. I'll, I'll get around to following you, but I just have a few things I need to take care of first. Promise I'll be back later. I'll catch up. Don't worry. The reality is, later may be too late. I mean, why wouldn't you come? Why wouldn't you come to the one who took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. Uh, when, when Matthew quotes that, that verse from Isaiah, he's reminding us once again that Jesus is the promised Messiah, the promised Savior King uh, that God promised to send to save his people, to bring healing to this broken world. And the quote is from Isaiah chapter 53. Uh, and when we understand that quote in its fuller context, it's not just about physical healing. It, it, it is that uh, in, in many ways, but it's, it's so much more. Right? It's not that Jesus came to just you know um, cure us from our sniffles, our physical pains. He came to heal this world from the greatest disease it suffers from, sin. And so we read in Isaiah 53 verse 5, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. I mean, just the amazing truth of those words. 
on the cross, when he was pierced, he was bearing the punishment for our sin. And that it's through his death that our sins are forgiven, that we are healed from everything that plagues us. That he secures that hope for a world free from sin and death. I mean, is there something stopping you from following Jesus right now? What could possibly be more important than your eternal salvation? You know, when your heart is captured by the astounding love of God in Jesus, when your soul is anchored in the gospel of God's grace, when you fix your eyes on the cross, your lips can do nothing but praise God as you contemplate what Jesus did for you. When that happens, when that happens, you, you really will have no problem in saying to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for the gospel. That Jesus is the one who takes up our infirmities, who takes up our diseases into himself. He bears the punishment for our sin. That through him, healing is flowing out into the world. And of course, that begins in the human heart. And one day we will see that healing take full effect in such a way that this world will be healed. Of all that is wrong, everything will be put right. Of all that is sick, everything will be made well. It will be completely and utterly restored and it will be truly amazing and we shall live with you forever. Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the gospel. Help us to fix our eyes on the King of Kings and to follow him wherever he leads. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.